Um, I'm Justina Nguyen. I'm a developer evangelist at Optimizely. I'm joined by Asa Shakar, our developer advocate. Um, how many of you have heard of Optimizely before, for a show of hands? Cool. Um, we're a feature management and product experimentation platform. And this is our developer relations team at Optimizely. And what we focus on is the developer experience within the product and ultimately how engineers like yourselves use our product. So going through things like our documentation, tutorials, presenting at events just like this one. And today we're going to be covering uh, what feature flags are, how they fit into CI CD, and then ultimately going into a hands-on workshop where you'll be creating a feature flag, rolling out a feature to your audience. And um, we'll dive into things like how you can target specific features to specific users. Um, so how many of you are familiar with feature flags? You can raise your hands. Cool. How many of you use feature flags at your current company? Kind of, OK. OK, <laughs> so we'll go into how you can uh, do that at scale in this workshop. Uh, so feature flags enable you to turn things on and off, if you think of it at a very simplistic level. If this feature flag is on, show this user X. If this feature flag is off, show user Y. Um, and it really just empowers you to really control when someone sees something and who and who it is that's seeing that feature. And so another concept within feature flags is this idea of controlled rollouts, or some of you may know it as canary releases. So maybe you're building this feature on your local development environment, and you know maybe you want your PMs to test that feature now, going through acceptance criteria. So you move that to staging. Then, after you're feeling comfortable with its performance and how it's performing, then you want to you know, show the feature to your beta users. Maybe it's your top customers who get early access to that feature. So only a small subset of, that, of your audience base is seeing that feature. Then, finally, you're feeling more and more confident over the weeks as you're releasing that feature out to, say, 30% of your audience, 50%, 75%. Then, ultimately, Everyone sees that feature, if that's what you want. But we've gotten this question a few times of, how do feature flags fit into CI CD, continuous integration or continuous delivery slash deployment? And so we kind of made this um, chart to show you where feature flags fit into every part of the software development lifecycle. And so starting with building and testing, it really saves you time to hide things behind feature flags so that you can still continue working on them without getting into messy merge conflicts. And then, once you get into the deploy part, you could actually decouple the deployment and release process by implementing a feature flag, really saving you a lot of time and, as most companies like, maintaining track on the deployment schedule. And then lastly, but most importantly, the release part. You want to empower teams to manage their own releases. And what that means is we've heard engineers say, we want to focus on shipping the code. We don't want to worry about who sees that feature, when they see it, what feature is it. We want to hand that off to maybe it's a PM, maybe it's sales, so that they can show the customer that new product. So going and in, diving into each one of these kind of categories, starting with build and test, um, funny little joke there, but with feature flags, you could actually make it so that there are you know, you're reducing the amount of stale feature branches. And so you're hiding things behind feature flags so you can develop in the safety of that. And also, uh, most importantly, you could actually continue to deploy kind of incomplete or parts of code without deploying everything. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the delivery process here. By decoupling deployment from release, you can actually have more flexibility and control over your development process. Something that we just went through, um, so optimizely, a lot of our retail customers saw a big surge in traffic during, say, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, which means a big surge in traffic for us. So what we did was we issued a deployment freeze. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we froze all development process. You actually, we still continue deploying behind feature flags. So we didn't actually cause any incidences because that's a pretty big prime time for us and our customers. So we want to prevent incidences like that from occurring. Um, and then when the release process, uh, here, how we like to think about it is a deployment is a technical process 
and then a release is a business decision. So when a customer sees that, is up to like the product team or sales, and the quality of the code and when it gets shipped is up to the technical side. So you can actually control and have everyone be able to see that visibly with feature flags. Um, and then the other thing to note here is with feature flags, you can test it out on like smaller percentages at a time. You can roll that back. So something we do at Optimizely is we have something called a wall of work. And every week, if we're um, deploying a new feature, we make it so that the Epic owner gets up and says, oh, we've deployed it to 5% of our audience, 10% of our audience, week over week. And then sometimes, if we see that 30% of our audience, we bump into a bug, we actually roll that back. So that 70% of our audience never even saw that bug to begin with. Um, and then lastly, I recently went to a DevOps conference, and it was really interesting hearing everyone say different times that they've been paged, like if it's like 2 AM, 3 AM, 4 AM. Um, but here, with feature flags, you actually have much more control over these like the times that you're being paid. You can actually prevent those incidences from occurring. Um, something that we have at Optimizely is within, you can connect feature flags to Jira tickets. And we have actually a list of like what you can do with each flag. And it specifically says, like this feature can be rolled back. Do it this way. Um, and so it's pretty organized. And you can see like what you should be doing with each feature flag and how you can address those issues. Um, the other thing with rollbacks is you're not dependent on someone else's um, downtime. So if you know, like you have some third-party JavaScript or some third-party vendor installed, and they're having downtime, that doesn't mean that you have to have that. You can just roll everything that's attached to that feature flag back. Um, and then the last thing is, I went to a talk yesterday where they talked about where the speaker mentioned um, they fixed something in production, but they didn't realize they broke this other thing. And then they fixed another thing, and it broke three other things. With feature flags, you can actually prevent that from happening by tying each of those features behind a feature flag and fixing those things in isolation without making those dependencies. Um, so the next thing I want to have everyone do is an interactive demo so you can get an understanding of what a feature flag is and how you roll that out. So you'll need your phones, and you're going to scan the top QR code. And Ace is going to show you live in our UI how that works. Great. So uh, as you get your phone out, um, some phones, uh, you can pull up the camera app and just point it at the QR code if you're not familiar with scanning. And it should show the URL. Or you can type in the URL that's next to that code. Uh, what you should see when you scan that QR code is uh, right here. You should see kind of an empty little moon. Uh, raise your hand if you see the moon. All right, so people are seeing the moon. Um, so what we did was we actually put uh, this little astronaut behind a feature flag to kind of show the power of launching a feature behind a feature flag. So here in our UI, we have this slider. And we can just turn the feature on. And raise your hand if you see the astronaut now. Nice. So you see my astronaut too. So everyone saw it. So that's cool. That's like a nice toggle. But uh, let's see what that control rollout might look like. Uh, that Justina was mentioning. You know, now I put it to 0%. Uh, so again, keep your eyes on your phone uh, and let them raise your hand if you see the astronaut. Uh, so we'll do 25% and see who sees it. Any hands up? No, oh, there's one. There's one over there. OK, a couple hands up. All right, seeing some hands. Let's go to 50%. Should keep your hands up if you're seeing the astronaut. I'm not seeing the astronaut, so I'm not. All right, that's about half. Let's go to 75. I'm still not saying, all right, this is the majority of hands are up. And let's go to 100%. Everyone's hands should be up, including mine. All right, cool. Uh, very neat. So uh, hopefully you saw a fun little demo with you know, a simple controlled rollout. But let's uh, take it even a step further. Uh, for this, uh, pull out your phone and scan the second QR code. And in the second QR code, what we're going to show is more of a targeted rollout. Instead of doing random percentages, 
let's be a little bit mindful about who we want to get this astronaut feature. Um, so uh, everyone all set with QR code number two. There should be nothing. Cool, everyone seeing nods, all right. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go into this astronaut feature and we've added this audience uh, for special rows and we can see how I've defined this audience to be a uh, row number uh, matches the following conditions. And right now it only matches the row zero and there are no rows that are zero, so uh, no one should be seeing the astronaut. But uh, who wants to see this feature? Any rows of interest? Oh, that row. So that's the numbers are one, two, three. So we'll do three and four, five, six, three and six. So I'll do uh, row number three. Oh, that turned into negative four. Uh, number equals uh, six. We'll go ahead and save that and uh, then save the feature. And so keep your eye on your phone three and six and all the other rows can kind of just like wait and raise your hands. Did we get three and six? Looks like we got three and six. Very neat. Uh, and we can kind of go back to the audience and you know remove that. And uh, you know if there was a bug and we realized those customers didn't actually want that feature, we can save that change and have it propagate so that that bug is, we've mitigated the risk of that rollout and bug. Awesome, so uh, hopefully you see kind of the power that uh, this tool provides both with simple kill switches on off switches as well as targeted uh, rollouts. But this is a workshop that you came to, so we're gonna actually do this live uh, in Express. So. Uh, the first step, uh, we're going to follow the checklist, um, which should look something like this with a checklist of steps. And the first step is to create a free rollouts account. On the other side of the QR code, there's a, a scan. You can do it with your phone to get the URL. Uh, and if you end up running into an error with creating an account, uh, we do have a limit on the number of IP address, the number of new accounts from an, an IP, and so if everyone's on the same IP, sometimes we can see errors. Uh, let me know if you run into that error, um, but it seems like no one is running into that. Raise your hand if you're running into any errors with creating an account. Maybe one, okay. Well, maybe you can wait and create an account there. So I'll just uh, open this URL and show you what looks like to create an account. Uh, with this free rollouts account, you'll just uh, sign in with your information. Great, so this is what it looks like when you're creating an optimizely rollouts account. Cool, so that worked. So maybe we're not running into this IP problem that I was hoping we would avoid. Um, and yeah, let's just put in some information here. And cool, now we have our free rollouts account. Um, so the next step, uh, and let me know if anyone, raise your hand if you're having any troubles with setting it up. Cool, so everyone's got an account. Let's go to the next step of the workshop, which is to create an Express application. How many uh, people in the audience use Express for their work? Nice, good amount. Anyone not using Express? Uh, what, what, are you, what are you using back there? Happy, cool. Any other, other frameworks people are using out there? In-house, oh, very cool. Very cool. Maybe it'll open source one day and we can all use it. <laughs> Based on that expression, seems like no. Uh, okay, so uh, we'll be creating an Express application. Uh, the easiest way to do this is with this Express application generator. Um, and uh, I wanted to ask the framework question because although this workshop is an Express, uh, you can use rollouts in uh, any platform, but we'll be using Express middleware to make it easy to install. So in the express generator, uh, you can use this command, express view pug, and then the name of your application. So go over to a terminal, and I'll name this application Node.js Interactive. 
um, and that was super fast. And then the next steps to follow after creating it is just to change to that new directory that's created, npm install, and then we will run the server and see it start up. So let's take this command to npm start. And uh, for those unfamiliar with this command, hopefully I can, there we go. Uh, this is saying just show me the logs from NJSI, the application I just named. Uh, so now we're seeing the logs. And we can go over to our browser and go to localhost 3000 and see our Express app. Cool. So I'll give uh, people just a moment to follow those instructions for creating and installing and running the application. People have an Express app running. Hands raised. See a couple. Cool. Anyone having problems with this so far? Create an account error. Yeah. So. If you're getting an account creation error, I would say um, you can either try, if you have cellular service on your phone, to try to create an account with your phone to avoid the IP problem that I mentioned. We'll try to fix that later. Um, the other option is just to follow along with the rest of the uh, workshop and, and get the account later. Okay, so any other problems before we move on? We want, we want to get everyone kind of working with us so we can get through, through all the steps. Um, so now let's go back to our steps. We created a free rollouts account, created an express application. Now uh, we'll follow along this link on how to for express where someone made this handy blog post on how to do Optimizely with Express. Uh, and so it starts with creating an account. So we'll go down to step two, uh, where we're going to start installing Optimizely into this Express application. And the first step to doing so is to install our SDK, uh, or Express Middleware, which is a wrapper around the job, plain vanilla JavaScript SDK. So we'll cut this server and do an npm install save on Optimizely Express. Cool. And that is installing Optimizely in the Express application. The next step that we're going to follow, and let me know, you know, feel free to interrupt me if you're having problems or any questions. The next step is to import that SDK that we just installed and start to initialize it. Uh, so with that, we'll pull up VS Code, and I'll open our NJS. Cool. And we'll go to our app.js. And towards the top, we can require that Optimizely Express middleware that we installed. And then uh, we'll want to initialize that uh, SDK, which as you can see from the blog post, there's this initialize method that we'll call. And I'll go through each of the different options that we'll be providing. So we'll do our optimizely equals optimizely express SDK dot initialize and provide some options. The first and most important option to initializing is providing the SDK key. And this is what connects uh, your application with the optimizely UI. How do we find this SDK key? We go to our uh, newly created account. And for those who haven't created an account, uh, you can use my SDK key, I guess. 
But uh, when you go to settings in the rollouts account on the left sidebar, you'll see that there's an environments tab. And under here, you'll see the SDK key. And we'll use for this workshop the development SDK key. And we can copy and paste that into VS Code here. And the way that this SDK key connects to Optimizely is you can see this URL below is a JSON file where that SDK key points. And this is where uh, the data file gets generated, which looks like it's not quite generating yet. And that could be because it's a newly created account. So we may have to come back to that. I'll come back to that in a second. OK, so we'll move on to the different options uh, that are passed to the SDK initialize method, which is uh, that data file I mentioned you get to control how frequently our application is going to pull for that JSON file, which defines the feature flags that we create in this UI. So uh, our data file options, we'll want them to have an auto update value of true, meaning that we don't want just the ex current state of the data file with the current state of the feature flags. We want it to continuously update and then we want to give it an update interval. And for these workshop purposes, I recommend you know, updating every second. But obviously, in a production application, you may want you know, a little bit longer of a time, maybe five minutes. We also, this is a polling mechanism. We also have push via webhooks uh, to provide kind of real time. But uh, this is kind of the easiest and simplest to set up in this workshop. So we'll start there. Question. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, this URL wasn't working earlier. Um, but let me pull up another example of a data file uh, to make it clear. So a data file is just a JSON object. And as we create new entities, like features in the UI, those entities will be reflected in this JSON format. So you see these feature flags. It's empty right now because there's nothing here. But as we create feature flags, it will get populated. And, uh, and so what the application is doing with this auto update is um, saying, fetch the latest every, try to fetch and see if there's any changes every second. Um, you can think of it as a remote config file. That helps. Any other questions here? The last option that I'll pass to this SDK uh, is the log level. Our log uh, logger kind of is noisy. So I'm just going to set it at the warn level in case um, something is going wrong. Cool. So then uh, the next step, any, any problems with initializing the SDK? Any other questions? Cool. The next step is to uh, apply the middleware similar to other middlewares in Optimizely Express. So we'll do app use optimizely.middleware, which is the same kind of instruction you'll see in this blog post right here. So you can copy and paste if you don't want to. Cool. Uh, so now is a good time to start our application after saving these changes and make sure we didn't break anything. So let's start. That seems to be working fine. And we can go over to our Express application. And everything is working great. Cool. So what, what we did at this step when we said optimize, use Optimizely middleware, we're now giving every single route in our Express application access to Optimizely information. So now we're ready to install a feature flag. And to do that, uh, we'll go over to one of our routes. So in the Routes tab of this auto-generated Express application, there's an index file. 
In the index file, you'll see the route which controls what we see in the home page. Right now, it's just rendering the title express, and we can see that here, express, welcome to express. So what we'll do is we'll change that title uh, and show a feature flag. Um, so as I mentioned, and also is mentioned in the blog post, is the each request object will get a new property dot optimizely, which will have the information like the SDK client, which will provide the APIs like is feature enabled, which controls whether or not the feature is on or off. So let's go to the code. And in the request, there's going to be an optimizely property. And in that optimizely property, there's a client which points to our APIs. And here we'll call is feature enabled. And the first argument to is feature enabled is the key of the feature. We'll call it uh, hello world for now. The second argument to is feature enabled is what we call a user ID. In an application where you actually have users powering them, it would be the identifier for that user. Uh, in this case, you know, I don't have uh, users in our backend, you know, this plain Express app that doesn't have a server, so we'll just hard code a user ID for now to simulate uh, what it would be like in a production application. Um, once that call is made, we can save this to a variable like is enabled. Uh, so this is now a Boolean that we'll get back from is feature enabled. And what we'll do is we'll just change the message that's returned uh, when the feature is enabled or not. So I'll just do a little ternary here and say if the is enabled is true, we'll do feature on and we'll get excited with an exclamation point. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll say feature is off, um, not excited. And uh, we can use you know, cool new syntax from JavaScript to put that message in the title. Cool. And I'll, I'll pause here for a second for those who are coding along. Um, and any questions about this code as people are coding it out, feel free to ask. Yes. Good, great question. So uh, that data file, uh, when you start the application, the data file will get loaded as soon as possible and then is trying to keep up to date. So then when you call, so that data file is now in memory in the application. So when you call is feature enabled, it's just going to that in memory file and determining whether it's on or off. So it's not making any network requests and it's not blocking, which is why we don't have to say like await or anything. Question. Yes, great question. So if Optimizely is down, if the data file is not there, is feature enabled will default to false. Uh, so that is one default behavior. But you can also, if Optimizely were down, provide your own kind of own checked in data file to say, we never want this feature to be off. That's one way to say, you know, we're going to have our own defaults. And another way is to, you know, if you really don't trust Optimizely CDN, host the data file on your own services. So every time the data file updates, kind of upload it to your own CDNs and have kind of more control over when that file gets update, updated. Cool. So now is an even better time to make sure I didn't break the application. So we're going to restart it. Uh, and go back to our Express app, and we should see the features off. And that is because we didn't turn it on, and we actually also didn't create it yet in the UI. So we called the feature Hello World, uh, and so we'll have to remember that as we go to our rollouts project. Um, and since the data file didn't look like it was quite uh, up yet, I'm going to use an existing different project. Um, so bear with me while I change uh, my project to 
the one that I know will work for demo purposes, or I hope will work. Oh, that might be wrong. Why? I think I got signed out from. Let's do. Switching to different account. Cool, so uh, I switched the account, so I'm going to switch my SDK key to one that I know is working. We'll do the staging, sure. And we'll restart this application. And here you can start to see the logs. Uh, now that I'm using a data file that I know is valid, you can see the application getting that data file. And we can look at the URL here and see uh, the data file with some content. So now uh, we want to create a new feature flag for our Hello World feature. So in the UI, in the left sidebar, you should see Features. Uh, click that and click Create New Feature. We'll give the feature key the same one that we put in the code, Hello World. And we can save that. And we can see that the feature is off. And so if we go back to our Express application and refresh it, the feature is still off. But now let's go and actually see this feature turn on. So we'll turn it on for our staging environment and save that. And we can at this point uh, either see that change being reflected in the CDN file or we can go to our running application and we can see when that data file gets updated from the logs. Uh, and hopefully we'll see that we can go now to our application and, uh, which I don't think it actually, there. Now it's updated and we can go to our application and now see the feature on. So now uh, at this point we've implemented a simple on off feature flag that we without any additional code deploys we can go back to our application turn this off save that change we can see we can wait as our application pulls for that change from our CDN to get that update there it is and we can go to our application and we can reload this without any additional code deploys and see now the feature is off. So hopefully everyone uh, followed with me. Uh, did, everyone, did anyone get to the stage where they are able to toggle a feature flag on and off? I see one. Oh, wow, lots of people. Awesome. Great. Uh, any other questions? What I will do now is ask myself a question, which is, how did we see that cool targeted demo piece? Uh, so optionally, to the is feature enabled API call, you can pass in attributes. Uh, and in those attributes, you know, I passed in maybe like a table attribute, but we can do something like, you know, let's say you have certain users who are VIP users. Um, and uh, right now, again, we don't have users backing our application, but uh, we can simulate this with something like query parameters. So what, what I'll do is say, um, you know, like let's say is VIP, and if this is a true query parameter, let's target that uh, feature to be on. And so now in the UI, you can go to audiences to target people, and you can see the special rows and special tables. The first step is to define the attribute that I pass into that API call. So I pass an attribute called VIP. So let's go and create a new attribute called VIP. 
Then we'll go to the audience creation, create a new audience based on that attribute, say VIP users. And we'll just say the VIP property is a Boolean uh, that is true, defines our VIP users. So now, let's go back to our feature, Hello World, and we're going to add this audience. So we're going to turn the feature on, but we're going to add it only to VIP users. And we'll save that change. And we should then, uh, once the data file updates, this feature flag is on, but targeted to very specific people. And so we can go to our Express application, and when I reload this, the feature should still be off. So it's still off. But if I add this query parameter, um, did I label it VIP? I labeled it is VIP. Is true. No. All right. Something didn't quite work. Um, let me think through this. So request query parameter is VIP equals to true. If that's a Boolean true, pass to the attribute VIP, and it should be enabled. Um, I shouldn't have to because it should have gotten the latest data file. So the oh, good point. Yes, I changed the code. <laughs> um, so changes to optimize lead doesn't require restarting the server. Changing the code does require restarting the server. Thank you. Hard to demo and think at the same time. Uh, so now when we reload, uh, we see it's true. Um, and when we turn that to false, it's off. So I did do the coding right. Cool. Uh, and that is the workshop. Uh, so we're pretty early. Uh, but thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, we'll be here afterward. Uh, just as a uh, summary, let's go over um, you know, summary of some things that we learned. Um, we created a, an Express application, installed Optimizely, seen uh, how we can roll out toggles, on-off switches, percentage rollouts, and targeted feature flags. This application is free to use, unlimited feature flags, unlimited seats. So uh, yeah, go have fun, and good luck with better deploys. Thanks so much. It's uh, not open source, but we can make it open source. That's something I can, yeah, I can look into. Yes, definitely. So great question. Um, if you go to our docs, which are linked um, in the uh, you are in the the page that you'll see, you can see the the different platforms we support. And so we do have, like, if you just wanted to do client-side browser or if you're in specifically React, we have SDKs that are specific for those platforms. But they all connect to the same data file uh, in the same type of way. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, I'll show uh, another cool demo. Um, which is, you may have wondered why my account has more stuff in the sidebar. And you also might be wondering, like, Optimizely, why are you giving this product for free? Like, either we're really stupid or we have, uh, you know, there's a reason why we're doing it. And the reason is because Optimizely is really an experimentation platform company. So once you have the tools to give different uh, experiences to different people, now you, now you start to question, what is the best experience? And here I'll show a demo to show the capabilities of what, um, what we can do in, um, in full stack, which is our sort of flagship product. So here's a demo 
let's say you're on the team building Flappy Bird. And uh, you know when you first built it, you didn't build any pipes. So you're just flapping along, and it's kind of boring. Um, and so you're trying to figure out what to do with this game. The next thing you can do is add a feature like we did uh, just now in the workshop. And so we can now play it with pipes, and we can see, wow, like Optimizely gives us control of controlling whether the features are on and off. But in addition to that, in the paid version of our product, we also have variables. We can change variables like remote configuration. So let's make the gravity like way heavier, and you can see this game like changed quite a bit, and it's kind of hard to do on this podium. Or we can do like really low gravity and like see a super floaty Flappy Bird. And the point of this is not just greater control, but now you're starting to ask the question of like, what is the best configuration? Part of what Flappy Bird's success was was like finding that exact right configuration. And so what we can do is add an, a variation and create an experiment to run on live traffic and see, given a different variation, some people will see one version of Flappy Bird and another will see another. Can we see the metrics coming back from that and actually run an experiment and see which got the most engagement. This is showing kind of the results that you get out of our paid product. We capture results from the different variations and show you which one is actually the winner to roll out. And this account, this product is a paid version. So, uh, and this, this demo is, uh, you can play with it. It's uh, not on your sheet, but optimizely.github.io slash asa slash Flappy Bird. Maybe I can zoom in. The UI is not open source, but the SDKs are all open source. Totally. Um, so you could uh, respond to webhooks from our server and decide, you know, we're going to save this file in our local system um, and control when, when it gets updated. Yeah, so the question about whether we can use this kind of free product in production, the nice thing, because it shares the same SDK, the same infrastructure as our paid product, which is relied on in production by very large customers, you get the enterprise grade with the free product. So uh, I can stand confidently. If you, if you want, we can provide kind of like our uptimes and SLAs uh, separately uh, for kind of the paid version to help gain confidence, but again, if you want kind of that control over the data file so you're, you're not, you're confident that you're not relying on a free product in production, then you can do that too. And uh, the way those different environments show up is they're different keys, uh, so different kind of files. So your staging will connect to a certain file, and your production will connect to a certain file. Yeah. Um, I can just say that the paid version is kind of an enterprise software sales cycle. So oftentimes we really want to talk to the customers directly to see, you know, what are your use cases, what will make sense. Um, yeah.
Question in the back. Yeah, great question. So going to audiences, um, you can uh, you can do uh, exclusion, so matches or does not match. You also have this kind of and or ability to combine more than one attribute. Um, so it's either this or that, or um, you know they're in Montreal. The location is in Montreal, and they're VIP. The the thing to note is that um, you just have to make sure that any information you want to target off of, you have to pass in as attributes to our SDK so that we can make the decision in memory without kind of going for other, fetching other data. Yeah, so. Yeah, we would pass in a property user agent, get it from a request. Um, you know, we we are you know thinking about how to make these SDKs better and easier. So uh, you know, if if we find that it's it's there's a, a common attribute that everyone's uh, targeting off of, we can. Uh, but this is the way to do it right now. It's so like whether they can edit things, whether they can just review things. Um, so that can be helpful to provide permissions around feature flags. Yeah, so uh, I think there are different ways to do it. Uh, one way, we, we did a, a site-wide redesign, and we wanted to see what that redesign looked like. And we kind of did the same thing I did with a query parameter of like, if this query parameter is on. Yeah, that being said, if you don't want like a public query parameter, maybe it's a query parameter that only applies if you're you know, signed in with a certain level of permissions. It's kind of you can control when these attributes get set. And uh, you can kind of control the mechanism by which when, when that uh, property is on or off. Does that make sense? Question.
Yeah, it's determined by the SDK. So this user ID um, along, the user ID is hashed into a range like 0 to 10,000 that maps to 0 to 100%. So where that hash ends up determines whether it's not the feature is enabled. And then the attributes is more of like, do they check all the boxes? Yeah. Cool. I think uh, I'll wrap up and start closing things down. But we are available around here if you want to ask any questions. And uh, yeah, come find us. Thanks so much.